Today at CES, ASUS ROG is releasing a couple products that really got my attention. One of them is a 75% wireless keyboard that has definitely learned a thing or two from the custom keyboard space, and the other is a lightweight competitive FPS mouse and pad combo in partnership with AimLab. You ready? Let's go! Okay, two things. Number one, this video is not sponsored by ASUS. There's no check attached to this. There hardly ever is with my videos, and if there is, I disclose it up front. But I always feel like I have to say that when I'm about to say really nice things about a product, but sometimes, and I know this is hard to believe in YouTube land, sometimes a company just gets it right. And two, finalized pricing info was not available at the time of this recording. I will update that later in a pinned comment once I have that info, but I'm looking at this stuff today with no perspective whatsoever as to how much it costs. I don't normally work like that. It makes for a really unique twist. Just be aware I might be more or less positive about this stuff once we get that info. All right, jumping right in, ROG has partnered with AimLab to bring us a new surface they're calling the Hone. This is three millimeters thick, it's rubber backed, it's low stitched and teal, and it measures 508 by 420 millimeters. The surface here is a hybrid coated pad. It kind of reminds me of the Fanatic Dash, but the grain seems a little bit tighter. I am going by memory on that though. It's branded with both ROG and AimLab, and it's got a centimeter ruler printed at the bottom. That pairs with this new AimLab task that allows you to really dial in your sensitivity in centimeters. Because it's tough to audit a new mouse and a new surface at the same time, I used my usual main, that's the wireless MZ1 from Extrify, at least initially. My main pad is the Saturn Pro from Lethal Gaming Gear. This home plays noticeably faster than that. I was able to adjust the flicks pretty quick. Tracking took a little bit longer, but still two to three lobbies, I was dialed in. It is pretty tough to get me excited about mouse surfaces these days because the market is saturated with a lot of the same stuff, but I do of course like the gray and teal AimLab colorway here, and I do perform well with this. As simple as the idea is, I really like the ruler here because it makes it really easy to experiment with DPI versus in-game sensitivity, and it makes it really easy for me to just tell people I play at 28 centimeters. In fairness, most people that play competitive will already know this, and ruler rulers exist, so it's not like you don't have a different way to measure this, but particularly for new players or for those experimenting with different sensitivity levels, it's pretty handy to just have it right in front of you. And it helps too that you're not trading performance in exchange for graphics, because this is just a solid hybrid surface that plays a little faster than a standard cloth pad. Okay, this mouse is the ROG Harp Ace Aim Lab Edition. It's symmetrical, solid shell, and bio nylon with a texture that feels pretty similar to the older Cooler Master MM520. Asus claims a weight of 54 grams here, and it is indeed actually 54 grams on my scale. Love that. That weight would be impressive enough in a solid shell, but they managed to maintain that weight while still having RGB in the scroll wheel, while retaining a Bluetooth mode in addition to high-speed wireless, and while allowing for dongle storage on the body itself. And it doesn't sound cheap, hollow, or resonant. Impressive. Also impressive is that it's not a small frame mouse. This is a medium. It measures 127.5 millimeters long, 63.7 millimeters wide, with a height of 39.6. It's a shape that in hand feels instantly familiar, but not so much so that I could draw a direct comparison to anything in my collection, and that collection's pretty deep. The hump is toward the middle, and it's got a high ridge down the center that sort of tapers off in all directions. It feels long and narrow, and it's got a really low front height. It's really tough to call it shape-wise. It feels unique at the moment, because a lot of the more popular mice have this short wide thing going on, and this is not that. I don't have a lot of Steel Series in my collection right now. I don't have a Sensei. So if this reminds you of something immediately obvious, please let me know in the comments. It's been driving me crazy. On the underside, you've got Mode Select, Profile Select for up to five stored profiles, and your DPI Select. You have four triangular feet. These are natural PTFE. You do have an option to move to a bigger full glide in the front of the mouse. The glides are pretty shallow. If you're using a soft pad, you will get some frame drag on the edges of this thing if you apply any kind of downward force at all to the mouse. Sensor position here is centered and it uses their 36k DPI aim point sensor. Everything feels good. The triggers are solid, 70 mil ROG micro switches, slightly heavier than both the Starlight 1210s and the MZ1 wireless. Side buttons feel great, very crispy, nice hard stops, also in that aim lab teal. The scroll is rubberized, light tactility, no noise, and it's easy to depress. You get the ROG logo in gray on the rear of the mouse. Then you also have a stealth AimLab logo on the inside edge that lights up blue if you have a UV light, which sadly, 
I do not. There's also ridges molded in the plastic on both sides, but they don't provide a lot of texture. They do include full laser cut grips for the sides and the triggers, and I do prefer this mouse with the side grips. This does use the Armory Crate software, and it uses a custom settings optimizer inside AimLab that will not only detect your optimal sends and DPI, but will also detect the best angle tuning and liftoff setting. While it's not trying to compete with some of the 4K polling models that we're seeing as of late, it's still really clear that Asus is listening to the market right now. This represents a very well executed take on the competitive FPS mouse with a surprisingly good build and feature set for its lightweight. I probably should mention too that I did all my testing split between the new 360Hz DIAC panel from Zowie and this PG27AQN from Asus. This is 360Hz as well, but in a 27-inch 1440p IPS. This panel is as exciting as it sounds, and I will be reviewing both of these in very short order, so I don't want to give away too much in today's video. All right, let's talk about this Azoth keyboard, because this thing is loaded. I mean, it's absolutely packed with features. For starters, a gaming company has finally embraced the 75% layout that's become so popular in customs, so you're getting your dedicated arrows and your F row, and you're still getting a small form factor that allows more room for your mouse. This is wired with the left-mounted USB-C port, as well as Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless 2 with magnetic storage for the dongle on the board. It's thin bezels all the way around in a seriously nice OLED screen up in the top corner. You can pick a variety of animations for this, or you can use an audio visualizer or upload your own GIFs, and it has a small persistent battery life indicator for when you're on wireless. There's also a control knob here that has up, down, and click in function, system volume and mute by default, but these can be reprogrammed too. The top is aluminum, the lower is plastic to accommodate the wireless modes, and you have dual adjustment flip down feed here. It's pretty substantial in the hand too, weighing in at two pounds, nine ounces, or just under 1.2 kilos. It uses ROG NX switches, available in linear, tactile, or clicky. That's in like November, but it is compatible with all MX switches. Oh, and it's hot swap. And it supports five pin switches, so no clipping. And it's a north facing config, so you can still use backlit keycaps. The included keycaps are backlit PBT, so no oil, no fingerprints, no shine. The font is still very futuristic or gamery, but that's a subjective thing. The included caps here are mid-height, so they're closer to a Cherry profile than the taller OEM profile that we're used to seeing on a lot of big brand keyboards. The big takeaway here is that yes, this board is compatible with any aftermarket MX style keycap, as long as it has support for those three single unit keys to the right of the spacebar and that 1.75 unit right shift key. Most keycap sets out there these days have support for that, but you want to make doubly sure before you buy. My copy came with the red linear switches, and they feel and sound better than what you'd expect for a branded gaming keyboard. There are three extras in the box, and they all have the lightest hint of factory lube. But if that's not enough for you, they also include a full DIY switch lubing kit in here, complete with keycap puller, switch puller, a tray, an opener that supports both NX and MX style switches, a brush, and a jar of official Crytox 205 grade zero. It is pretty limited in quantity, but it should be enough to get through one set of switches, no problem, and this was a very surprising inclusion here. You will not need to worry about lubing the stabilizers because they're very good right out of the box with extra attention paid to the space bar. You could also completely replace these with any plate mount MX style or CoStar style stab without taking the board apart, but you really don't need to. They even put extra sound dampening under the space bar. This far exceeds what I would expect from a gaming keyboard. It's also packed with case dampening. It's got silicone gaskets, a silicone pad between the plate and the PCB, a pour-on layer, and a silicone base layer. All you hear on this are switches. If you're listening in headphones, you can hear the difference that lube makes. It mutes out some of the higher pitch characteristics of the sound, resulting in, yes, a thockier sound. It is still a stiffer typing experience. There's no flex or no bounce here, but that's totally subjective, and it doesn't take away from the experience at all for me. It also toggles between PC and Mac mode. It has on-the-fly macro recording, and it has onboard storage for the default profile and five additional custom profiles. You get a bunch of different lighting modes in Armory Crate, and while they didn't provide any battery life stats, it's pretty common sense that RGB pulls on the battery really heavy. The wireless performance is bulletproof too. I did the majority of my testing over 2.4 gigahertz with the wireless heart base mouse at the same time and a wireless headset as well and not one single error or dropout or any weird behavior. This is just really solid. The only elephant in the room 
It's not a Wooting 60 HE, but the Wooting currently is a 60% layout. So no arrows, no F row, it's not wireless, and it lacks convenient stuff like dedicated media controls. If those are things that are important to you, this is easily in my top two production keyboards. If any big peripheral brand came to me and wanted to develop a flagship keyboard that would appeal to the widest audience and Hall Effect wasn't on the table, this is what I would build. If this had a soft carry sleeve, I would travel everywhere with this. Simply an outstanding keyboard from Asus ROG. Hey there, Editing Brian here. So right before I was wrapping up this video, I did get some information. We are looking at late January for an on-shelf release in the United States. They couldn't give me exact pricing yet, but they did ballpark me. For the mouse, we're looking at about For the Azoth keyboard, we're looking at around I think that is a steal for what you're getting in that board. Next up, we're probably gonna take a look at all the mice that came out at the end of 2022, or maybe we'll dive into these monitors. I haven't quite decided yet. That's it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.